Hi everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to be installing new CV axles on my Mark IV Jetta. I've decided to go with Raxles because I've read some horror stories about aftermarket parts and I don't want to do this job more than once. I even called a couple of European parts suppliers and they told me that their axles have a really high return rate and I should probably go with somebody else. So let's dive into what you'll need to get this job done. If you did go with Raxles, your hardware is included. Flange bolts, your axle nut, all your lubrication, it comes shipped in these Ziploc bags. To remove your OEM axle flange bolts, you need a 10 millimeter triple square driver. I bought a snap on one because I've had issues in the past and I didn't want to have an issue today. To reinstall your Raxel flange bolts, you need an eight millimeter Allen head. In order to remove your axle nut, you need a 30 millimeter 12 point socket. I have a 17 mil socket here to remove my lug nuts. I'm doing something a little different today. Rather than remove the ball joints and tie rod, I'm gonna separate the spindle from the strut. So to do that, I have an 18 mil socket, 18 mil wrench, and I have a strut spreader tool. Now the strut spreader tool isn't necessary, but it helps a lot to open up the spindle and have it fall off the strut. I've also got a hammer in case I gotta do any coaxing of the spindle or the axle to get it out. I've got some half inch extensions to make my life a little easier. I've got a half inch breaker bar, a pipe to give me some more leverage with the breaker bar, a half inch torque wrench for reinstallation. I've got some croil in case anything gives me problems with rust or seized bolts. I've got never seized when I reinstall everything. And I was lucky enough to have a friend that let me borrow his impact gun. Now this isn't necessary, I don't own one. And as you can see, I only have one impact socket, but this is gonna make your life a lot easier, especially for the axle nut. So if you've got a friend that'll let you borrow one, it's a great idea. Otherwise, maybe you can buy one or if you already own one, but I don't and a friend let me borrow his, so I'm really happy about that. So with all that said, let's get started. I'm going to skip over jacking up the vehicle and removing the wheels, but always remember to jack up your vehicle on flat ground and use jack stands to support the vehicle, not the jack itself. If you have any questions regarding this, please comment below and I'll help you out. All right, so it's time to remove our axle nut. This is where your 30 millimeter 12 point comes in. Now I know I talked earlier about this not being an impact socket, but I'm not even going to mess around with the breaker bar. I'm going to go straight to the gun. That's why I didn't want to use the breaker bar. Quick and easy. Most of the how-tos, including your Bentley manual, will tell you that you have to remove your ball joints and tie rod end, and then that'll make you have to get a new alignment. I'm going to remove the spindle bolt here to disconnect the spindle from the strut, and that'll give me the clearance to pull the axle out, and I won't have to realign my car. So for that, you'll need an 18 millimeter socket and an 18 millimeter wrench, and we're gonna loosen that up. All right, so now that my spindle is loose from my strut, I'm actually going to loosen the axle bolts connected to the flange of the transmission before I totally remove this to give myself a little bit of leeway. All right, so you can see your flange bolts in there. You're gonna to wanna to crack those loose at first. Now I don't have anybody strong enough or anybody to help me hold this while I try to loosen them because your axle is going to turn when you try to crack them loose. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do by myself in order to crack those loose. I don't have the set screw for my rotor so it's just going to spin freely of the hub. So I'm going to reinstall my lug nuts in order to keep the rotor spinning with the hub. Now I've done this before. And I just did one and I ended up actually bending the lug nut. So I'm going to do all five. It might be overkill, but I don't want to bend another lug nut. All right, now that that's done, a very scientific method of sticking a screwdriver in the rotor so it hits against the caliper and keeps the whole assembly from spinning while I try to loosen the axle bolts. So there you can see it came loose pretty easy. You really don't wanna work it too hard because these triple squares can slip and then you'll end up messing up the whole head of the bolt and that's the last thing we wanna do. Now with your strut spreader tool in the back of the spindle, this is gonna be nice and loose. And you're gonna be able to separate the spindle from the strut. Now in order to get your control arm to drop a little further and give you the clearance to separate from the strut and get your axle out, we're actually gonna disconnect the sway bar. During the process of separating the spindle from the strut, I made a very amateur mistake. I didn't disconnect the padware sensor or the ABS sensor. 
because of that, I actually broke the wires to both sensors. Now, not only do I have an ABS light on in the dash, but I also have the padware sensor light on. Those are both easily fixable, but they're both easily avoidable. I'm telling you this so you don't make the same mistake I did. Remember to disconnect both the padware sensor and the ABS wire before you separate the strut from the spindle. So a little coaxing from the hammer, the strut spreader tool, and the strut is disconnected from the spindle. All right, so with our spindle disconnected from our strut, now we're ready to push the axle shaft out. I've got a small enough sledge that I'm not gonna hit my hub. You don't wanna damage your hub. Um, I'm not gonna be able to push it out by hand, which is why I've got the sledgehammer. So if you don't feel comfortable or your sledge is too big, use a screwdriver or a chisel and just hit that spline because you don't care about the old axle. Once the axle is removed from the hub, you can let the whole assembly rest in the control arm but I'm going to get a jack and position it under the control arm to straighten everything out and make the axle removal easier. With this method of not removing the ball joint and leaving the spindle connected, you'll have to make sure the spindle rotates out of the way far enough to pull the axle out, and you'll have to loosen the end link on the sway bar, rotate that out of the way, and that'll give you the clearance to pull the axle right out. If you do have any questions about this, just comment below and I'll help you out. At this point, you can remove the bolts holding the axle to the transmission flange. Again, remember to be really careful with these triple squares, they can be a pain. Once the bolts are removed, slide the axle right out, and it's time to install the new one. Installation is the opposite of removal, but I'm going to show you guys how I did it anyways. Even though I bought Raxels, if you bought some other brand, installation is still the same. There might be a couple unique things from the Raxels, like the torque spreaders and the bolts, but you can still use this installation as a guide. I didn't have anyone helping me during this process, but it is a really big help if you do. If you have someone else holding up the axle and aligning it to the flange so you can concentrate on tightening the bolts, it's a lot easier than trying to do both jobs at once. Once all the flange bolts are about hand tight, it's time to feed the axle back into the hub. Just like when we remove the axle, we want to be really careful to line up the splines correctly because you don't want to damage your hub. At the same time that the axle is going into the hub, you have to make the strut go into the spindle. It's kind of a balancing act of getting everything to compress together correctly, but if you just take your time and move the control arm up, move the axle in, it'll all fit together. Once that whole assembly's back together, don't forget to attach your end link, and now it's time to tighten down your axle flange bolts. The torque spec called for the axle flange bolts is 59 foot-pounds, so that's where your torque wrench will come in. I did have a little trouble with the Allen driver. The base of it was kind of large and it interfered with the boot. So maybe if you go from the top of the axle instead of the bottom of the axle like I did, you'll have better luck, but I found it easier to tighten everything from the bottom. So leave a comment and let me know how you did it. At this point, the entire installation is complete with the exception of the axle nut. If you've ever taken your axle nut off before, you know the long drawn out process that the Bentley manual outlines. Now the Raxle instructions say something different. They say as long as you tighten the nut down and have about four or five exposed threads, it's tight enough. I'm not going to tell you which way to use. In the past I've used the Bentley manual and this time I tried the Raxel method. At the time of posting this video, the Raxels have been on for a couple months and I haven't had any issues. The Raxel nut is slightly different than the OEM nut. The OEM nut is not a lock nut and the Raxel nut is. So that might be why he says that his method works, but I'm not going to say one is better than the other. Once you've tightened down the axle nut in whichever method you feel is best, Double check and make sure everything else is tight before installing your wheel. Go ahead and take the car for a test drive, make sure everything feels good, sounds good, and if it is, you've just completed the axles on your Mark IV Jetta. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, check out some of my other videos, and don't forget to subscribe.